it sits in silence, an emptiness perhaps in perpetuity. The death of Cumberland River Hospital has thrust this place into darkness. We are seeing a huge divide in health care among Americans. Johnny Presley is the owner of this small rural hospital located in Salina, Tennessee, a town of 1,400 people, a town that no longer has an emergency room. When people can't live in the rural communities they grew up in without having adequate access to health care, then it's almost like you're in a prison. Months of fighting with Medicare for reimbursement payments finally led to the inevitable. I used over $2 million of my own funds to keep this thing open for four months. Hospitals across the country are struggling now more than ever, as patients are still avoiding elective surgeries because of COVID. Those are the bread and butter of most hospitals' bottom line. It's thrown all hospitals into a negative cash flow issue. Not just about the money, though. When I fell down the stairs, I actually woke up. Uh, from the fall. When Stephen Hendrick fell down the stairs earlier this year, help was only a five minute drive away. It means everything. It really does to a small community like this. With the hospital now closed though, the nearest emergency room is an hour's drive away. This is the reality of rural health care in America. So many people are going to die. They're going to die because they don't get the emergency care that they need. Since 2005, a staggering 174 rural hospitals have shut down nationwide, 15 of those closures happening this year alone, leaving a vacuum of care in their absence. Texas and Tennessee lead the nation in hospital closures. By the end of this year, hospitals across the country are expected to lose $300 billion, a staggering statistic that ripples far beyond the walls of any emergency room. In most rural communities, hospitals are often the single biggest employer in town. When Cumberland River closed, nearly 100 doctors, nurses, and staff were let go. I think it's awful because we could have a hospital. By some estimates, 2020 may end up claiming the lives of nearly 200 more hospitals. To keep our hospitals open in the middle of this pandemic, it's going to take the government to intervene. With federal aid, Johnny Presley could reopen the hospital tomorrow. But so far, his pleas to politicians have gone unanswered. I think it's just a travesty that this country is going through. This country is so politically polarized right now that the most basic human needs of food and health care in this country are now being overlooked. Rural lifelines on life support, with American lives hanging in the balance. The ability to take care of those folks right now is just not available. In Salina, Tennessee, I'm Chris Conti. It courses through the veins. A steady pulse, a constant rhythm. But I shot a man in Reno just to watch him. It is music that keeps the heart of Nashville beating. But what happens when the song stops? We've been closed north of six months now. Everybody's out of money. Chris Cobb hates the silence. He's the owner of Exit Inn in Nashville, a small independent music venue which has been closed since March because of COVID. It's just not safe. It's, it's just not safe to do what we do right now, unfortunately. 57 employees laid off, not a concert in months. Close signs are popping up at businesses around the neighborhood who rely on shows to bring customers in. Chris Cobb knows he's next. Once the money's gone, we close and we just get closer every day. From Cheryl Crow to Billy Joel to Jimmy Buffett, all have at one time graced this stage. It's not a giant stadium, but these kinds of spaces across the country are where smaller artists get their start. Daniel Donato is one of them. Well, I met her down in a red light tavern. I want to create memories that people can, can go back to. Without smaller stages to play on, Daniel has lost a substantial amount of income. He's also lost the ability to connect with fans on a visceral level. The first thing that a musician plays is the venue. They don't play their instrument, they play the venue first. 
By the end of the year, live performance venues are expected to lose about $9 billion on ticket sales alone, which is why so many of them are so desperate for some kind of federal help. It's an existential crisis. Audrey Fisher is with the newly created National Independent Venue Association. Independent businesses have never had to ask for help before. The National Independent Venue Association represents 2,800 independent performing venues around the country. A stunning 90 percent of members say they will close by year's end without any federal assistance. It's happening and every day that goes by is a risk that it happens more and because people have run out of money. In recent months, the group has created the Save Our Stages Act, a $10 billion grant program for independent venues with bipartisan support. All they need is a vote in Congress. We're on the edge of a cliff with a huge number of venues right there at the edge and they're about to go over and they won't come back. And it's not just about the jobs. It's about the music we'll never hear. Loving while the world goes round. It's hard to think about American music without this network of independent music venues that have existed in this country for decades now. American music as we know it would not exist. And I'm afraid that that's what we're about to learn the hard way is that it can't continue to exist as we've known it when these venues all go away. And living with the shades pulled down all day. But for now, that's a song Chris Cobb is trying not to write. A hope that the sun doesn't permanently set on some of the nation's most beloved stages. We will survive. In Nashville, I'm Chris Conti. It is easy out here to forget. A momentary escape from a year where beauty has often been hard to come by. Last one out closes the door. For students at James Faulkner Elementary, the walk to school this year looks a little different. This is 80 and 30. Like teachers across the country, anxiety was filling the inside of Jackie Cornwell's mind all summer. Am I done? What did I forget? So she decided to roll the dice and move her lessons outside. We do know that COVID has been a really challenging time for adults and kids. One ten. Every day for three hours a day, Jackie Cornwell's third and fourth grader set up their classroom in the woods. Adding it all together, I got 311 trading cards. Trading cards. Away from the confines of their school building, this outdoor classroom has brought a sense of normalcy and safety. Being outdoors is another layer of protection. The New Hampshire air is plentiful out here. No concerns about ventilation. It might seem really easy to you, but this skill is tricky. Jackie Cornwell has also realized the beauty of Mother Nature's palette has helped foster a better learning environment. It's really turned something that could have made this year really horrible, sitting in desks, facing forward, not playing with friends, into one of the best years I've had in my nine years of teaching. And while these outdoor classrooms are helping keep students safe from COVID, it's also helping with their mental health during some incredibly challenging times. A speech. Dozens so of states are returning to virtual learning because of spikes in COVID cases. Okay. Even out here, removed from the world, Brie Bell worries about being sent home again. It wasn't normal. I was like, really like, I didn't like it too much because like at my house, we don't have very good internet. So like, it's kind of, it's hard. But this 10 year old and her classmates have taken pride in the outdoor space they've built by hand. They've hung hammocks for reading time, even built a fire pit for the colder months. It's like really nice to finally like get to take our mask off and chill in the woods with some nice fresh air. While we're here and while we can be together, we're going to make the best of it. If COVID has taught these students and teachers anything, it's resiliency. Hopefully this is the year they'll remember as when they got to learn outside versus this is when they went to school during COVID. And they're happy, really. In a year like this, a lesson worth remembering. I feel like they're really having these impactful experiences that they're going to carry with them for the rest of their lives. Does that sound good? In Stoddard, New Hampshire, I'm Chris Conti. Awesome.